all is not as it seems. We set goals to achieve certain outcomes, but I believe our desire to move from where we are now to where we wanna be is also driven by something else. It's a set of needs, innate universal needs that when met, bring us closer to our authentic self. And living an authentic life, if we can master it, is the holy grail of happiness. What though, if we could attach other outcomes to our quest for authenticity that extend beyond our own self-gratification? What if we could not only benefit ourselves, but create shared value and have social impact it would be incredible, wouldn't it, to not only set a goal that deeply fulfills our own needs, but services the needs of society? What I have discovered is the untapped potential of cause-related events, where we walk, run, swim, count steps and cycle for charity. Cause-related events have experienced exponential growth in recent years but their potential as a vehicle to not only satisfy our own innate needs, but service the needs of society is incredibly underrealized. Now, some of you have been participating in these events for years and for all sorts of causes, whether it be for mental health, diabetes, cancer, or maybe the Heart Foundation. Others of you have thought about it while well, the rest of you have probably not even considered it. And that's okay, but know now, there's more to counting steps and carving up the kilometers than we realize. Why it's important for you to understand this now is because sooner or later, you're gonna set yourself another goal. Having a reason bigger than yourself is usually a good way to ensure you stay on track. But if you also care about being of service to others, helping humanity and changing lives, then understanding how we meet our needs through these events is the starting point to understanding where and how you can make a difference. I'd like to share with you what led me here. It was an experience that pained me for many months and I dissected every inch of it to understand how it happened. Now, it won't mean anything to you, and it didn't mean anything to me until it was too late. I failed the Oxfam Trail Walker. As many of you know, the Oxfam Trail Walker is a global event where teams of four walk 100 kilometres to raise awareness and funds in the fight against poverty. I thought walking 100 kilometers would define me, but I only made it to 45. The little man on the tracker app showed me slumped over, highlighting my fail to anyone and everyone who was watching our team's progress online. We had walked all day and I had developed searing red, swollen feet and ankles. We'd made it to checkpoint three. It was eight o'clock at night and I ventured into the medic's tent to seek some advice. They had told me I developed a severe allergic reaction to my bamboo socks, of course. They suggested that the only real course of action for me was to retire. We were about to walk into tough terrain and into the night where there was no mobile phone coverage and no way of getting help until the morning. A sense of lightness lifted me higher at the thought that I had been instructed to retire. I then thought of my kids and realized it was the only sensible thing to do. As I left the medic's tent and picked my way back through the dense cluster of walkers in various stages of preparation for the kilometres ahead, I wondered how to break the news to my team who were finishing up at dinner. I didn't need to worry. Their collective response reinforced my decision. Moments later, I had resigned. 
An initial wave of relief washed over me. I bid my team farewell and watched them walk across the field and out of the checkpoint three spotlights into the darkness. I was loaded into a Jeep and carried out of the state forest, only to be passing the walkers one more time. As I sunk back into the comfort of my leather seat, my gaze turned to the side mirror and once again I watched their headlamps disappear into the darkness. I was emotionally spent, switching from thoughts of relief to remorse with the latter quickly overtaking me. The pain of defeat was now far greater than the physical discomfort of my swollen and blistering feet. But here's the thing, I somehow always knew I wasn't going to make it. It wasn't so much the allergy that was the problem. There was something else, some other subconscious belief that was greater than the will to continue. I believe it was a fear of the dark, something I'd struggled with since I was a kid. This realization ignited in me a burning desire to delve deeper into my understanding reason for participating. What need was I trying to meet anyway? And how was it the same or different to anyone else who was on the course? Is it really because we think we can make a dent in the fight against poverty? Or is there some other compelling reason that has little or nothing to do with social goodness? It got me thinking, what if participating in cause-related events is as much about servicing our own needs as it is about raising funds and awareness for charity? Perhaps that's why they're perennially important, because they fulfill certain other needs. And so began my quest for the truth. Years later, as a doctoral researcher on authenticity, I'm investigating how we meet our needs through these events and how our authentic self can lead to having greater impact. To understand how it works, first of all, we've got to understand the process. There's two ways to achieve authenticity. The first is in authenticating acts, activities that induce a state of flow. Flow, as we know, is when we're totally immersed in thoughts and actions and activities that create a peak experience and intense joy or peak performance and superior functioning. What do you do to get into a state of flow? For me, my best time to experience flow is 5.30 in the morning when I take myself off to my morning coffee shop. Now, I don't exactly know whether it's my work or the coffee that induces this feeling of peak experience or intense joy, but I'm not about to question that now. The second way to experience authenticity is in authoritative performances, which offers a collective sense of identity and the secure feeling of belonging in a like-minded community. This is where participating in cause-related events comes in. With both approaches, we purposefully link the experience with stories of the self. What's important is whether we perceive the experience to be authentic, not whether we're actually having an authentic experience. I'll repeat that again. What's important is whether we perceive the experience to be authentic, not whether we're having an authentic experience. To perceive an experience as authentic, it's important to understand what is authenticity. What is authenticity and what does authenticity mean are two of the most searched keyword phrases after can't verify the CSRF token authenticity and the authenticity of host can't be established. The concept of authenticity derives from an existential understanding and philosophy where we are both self-authored, owning our actions and genuine, fully reflecting our enduring values. When we are true to ourselves, we feel accepted by others. 
Whereas an inauthentic person hides their true self in order to be accepted. I talked earlier about universal needs that we all share. Well, here they are because they hook right in to the concept of authenticity. The first universal need is the need for autonomy, where our actions match our values and beliefs. We're living life on our terms, not on anyone else's. Where's autonomy important to you? Perhaps it's at work and having remote working opportunities or flexible hours. Maybe autonomy is more important to you in your personal life where you have control over how you spend your weekends and who with. The second universal need is the need for competence where we seek mastery over our environment. This is where goal setting comes in, where we seek to make incremental improvements in our life. It could be with losing 5Ks or getting fitter, or maybe it's for financial well-being. The third universal need, and by no means the least, is the need to belong, to feel a sense of connection to each other, to time, to place, and to community. While all three needs are essential to well-being, it's the need to belong that I believe drives most of us. I talked earlier about my morning coffee shop. It's a place of great belonging. We're all regulars that go there, as is the running clubs and the cycling groups who turn up in their logo emblazoned lycra and they sit there and share stories about their pre-event training or their post-event performance. As these lycra wearing coffee lovers demonstrate, Authenticity is more likely to be found in experiences that create a deep sense of fulfillment and meaning than in merely pleasurable activities. This is where participating in cause-related events comes in. There's a bolted-on benefit that comes with being benevolent. Three insights have emerged from my doctoral research on how we meet our needs through these events. Firstly, the challenge of completing the event is, as I suspected, the primary motivation for participating, more so than supporting the cause. We feel a deep sense of fulfillment from participating. It aligns with our values. It's a reflection of our true self and doing it with others is really enjoyable. You can see here how this need for autonomy competence and belonging piece together. Secondly, our social identity underpins our involvement. Given the tendency to see our true selves as fundamentally good and therefore socially desirable, it explains the individual differences in how we fulfill our self-authenticating goals. Belonging to an event community is important because it gives us a sense of identity and a sense of pride and esteem. What my research has also revealed is while we don't necessarily feel on the same physical or social level as anyone else in the event community, we feel on the same mental level with shared values and common goals. This group think reinforces our feelings of authenticity. And lastly, we seek validation from others. Validating our experience on social networks reinforces the perception the experience is authentic. Who's done one of these events and not posted on social media? Most of us do it because it validates our identity, our belonging in the group and our social goodness. When others validate our identity, it increases the feeling of authenticity. What it does is it motivates us to search for this external verification. This is why participating in cause-related events is so significant. Posting our experience on social media is a form of social proof which validates our identity. We use brands and products and experiences as a self-authenticating strategy 
which is gold for any organisation partnering or sponsoring these events. What's more, we are creative and capable of producing authenticity out of almost anything. We have this chameleon-like ability to adapt to our changing surroundings by drawing on strategies and cues to increase the feeling of authenticity. This is what makes this so exciting. When we validate our identity and our belonging in these event communities, we are creating shared value and having social impact. Who doesn't want to be a part of that? So next time you're thinking about setting yourself a personal challenge, perhaps consider directing your energies towards a charity event where there is a dual benefit for self and society. Participating moves us beyond the hashtags and woke washing. Incidentally, I've just completed a virtual Oxfam trail walker. I made it to 99 kilometres. Somehow, despite walking at least 12 kilometres past the prerequisite 100k, the online app would not register it. My little man is still slumped over, short of the finish line. But as it turns out, it's the Ks that I didn't walk that have given me my greatest insights. Perhaps it's not about the number at all. Perhaps participating in itself creates something far greater and more satisfying than we ever imagined. Thank you.